Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with the 33rd installment of Black Girls on Television. All right, you guys, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, you guys, so the show opens with Anika telling Lucius that she's bored in the house and she wants to get out and do something. She is a prisoner there as far as Lu Lucius is concerned. He will not let her go anywhere and do anything. She wants to work for Cookie. He says, hell no. He's got his eye intently on the stream uh, subscriptions for the Empire streaming service. It needs to get up to $10 million or the board is going to cut it and he's going to lose millions of dollars. So he's very intent on that. While he's explaining that to her, he's also getting a blowjob under the desk. Unbeknownst to Anika until her old uh, secretary comes up and, you know, she's got an attitude. like Because he's so pressed about these streaming uh, subscriptions, he's he needs five exclusive songs for the streaming service. He tells Cookie that Jamal needs to get it together. He needs these songs and not only that but he's going to release the black and white album okay cookie said you know jamal doesn't want to do that you know you don't give a fuck get it done okay she says okay well we'll see i got a date with councilman Diggs, so we'll see what happens after there you know lucius i don't see what you see in him okay jealous andre is out of jail and when he gets out you know paparazzi is all out there and you know he's looking all overwhelmed his lawyer is an asshole you know don't go all black lives matter on me i'm just like oh here we go with this when people are asking him questions about what happened all of a sudden he hears ronda over there on the side you know, you know none of this would happen if i was around he's going through his changes still po andre jamal is trying to also get his demons together he's at a support group for his PTSD that he refuses to admit that he has. When the counselor tries to introduce him, everybody there already knows who he is, already knows his story, you know, but the counsel, the counselor wants him to be able to tell his own story. You know, Jamal's just like, no, 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 I just want to lay low, okay, just kind of get the feel for the group. But he's overwhelmed, obviously, and uh, when he rushes out of the meeting, the counselor comes running up after him and is like, I'm sorry about what happened in there. That's not usually how we roll. Again, he tries to tell him he has PTSD. Jamal doesn't want to admit that he has PTSD. What do you think you have? I don't see what is the problem in admitting that you have PTSD. At least you have an explanation for why you wigging out and going crazy and having panic attacks all the time. But that's just me. Andre takes it on back to the Empire's um, offices and he tells Cookie and Lucius that he's not going to fight this. You know, they're all like, you know, you a black man and they fucked with the wrong family and we're going to get you a lawyer. You know, Lucius wants to have um, 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 Tasty. Is that his name? That ain't his name. What's his name? Thirsty. <laughs> he was thirsty to, you know, get on it, take care of it. And Andre is just like, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, he's just going to do whatever it is when he goes to court and let that be that. Let his unconcerned lawyer take care of it. So, you know, Lucius is like, that boy is in for a, a world of trouble. Andre doesn't want to fuck up the, the company. Okay, it's publicly traded. And, you know, he knows that if they have this big scandal, then it's going to mess up the numbers for the company. Company first. We see Tariq. Tariq is still hell bent and intent on getting to Lucius. Okay, even though they've dropped the old case, Tariq is like, we can build a new case. I mean, he got some shit going on. I know he can catch him. I was just like, Tariq is really obsessed. Now, Empire has some sort of showcase or something, and Tiana's up there, and who should show up on the stage with her but uh, Lil Romeo. Cookie is looking like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, he was going to be uh, singing with her. Did you? Nobody seemed to know. Hakeem is pissed because I guess he thinks that's his woman. I said, what about Senorita? Now, you ain't, I mean, it ain't been but a couple of days since your wedding was uh, derailed. Now, all of of a sudden you just all in love with Tiana that nigga crazy Tiana and Lil Romeo is up there singing and whatnots and then when they finish they have like this long passionate kiss okay oh why they do that now Hakeem can't take it he goes behind um stage you know in the office and he ranting and raving to Jamal you know that's my girl and how you gonna do that and you know Jamal's like well, since when has she been your girl you, that has it's not your girl you ain't gonna fight nobody stop being stupid okay Lucius comes in there you know <laughs> you know maybe you put it on wax if he got a problem Problem, then he needs to tell it to the world okay don't fight that guy especially you might get your ass whooped now cookie got an idea she takes um jamal to go see uh kitty kitty is being played by mariah carey and uh, you know she's a big star on the show just like she is in real life and you know jamal is all overwhelmed and excited about seeing her cookie has this big plan that he can sing a song with the uh, kitty and side note you guys why mariah carey ain't never got no fucking clothes on okay just big titties everything out i was just like what is <laughs> 
I mean, she always walk around. Maybe she always looks like that. Anyway, you know, he's excited. But the deal is that he has to go on this South American tour with her. And, you know, he just gets all nervous. Uh, you know, he's not really ready. Kitty was just like, well, I mean, I, you know, everybody's all uncomfortable. I thought he was ready. I'm just going to go back over here and work. Cookie, come on over here, stupid. You got to be able to get out there and show your face. Like your dad said, he's right. You got to, you know, I was just like, how are you not really supportive of your son recently got shot, could have been killed, is obviously having some mental struggles with this, and you gonna tell a nigga to hurry up and get back on stage? Like, I don't know. <laughs> that family is so ass backwards, okay? But he telling her that he's not ready. But Cookie pretty much forced him to, you know, he gonna have to work with, with Kitty. Now, we see Lucius, and he working with the boy um, that did a little corny rap last week. He's working with that boy. It looks like he's going to give him a uh, some kind of record deal. The little boy don't seem to be all that sure that he should be working with the Lucius, but he was like, don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Cookie and Jamal go back to Lucius, and they tell him, look, we gonna work with Kitty. Okay, we're going to have an exclusive song for you. You know, you can put it on the streaming service and it's going to work out fine. You know, Lucius is happy about that. The only thing is you cannot put out the black and white album. Okay, so uh, Lucius and Jamal shake on that. Now, Hakeem, you know, since he's so hot and bothered about Tiana singing with Lil Romeo, you know, he's in the studio and he got this diss record. You know, he's talking about that was my girl and I hit it first and all this shit. Shine wants Nessa to get up there and sing the hook. And, you know, Nessa was just like, yeah, that's not really like my thing. Like, I don't want to do a diss record to another woman. Shine was like, what, bitch? you gonna get up there and do it okay she was just like rolls her eyes and why she do that <laughs> that shine and grabbed her up on the neck and you know it was choking her out Hakeem was just like wait a minute wait a minute you know what you doing shine let her go and she goes storming off you know but now we look like we got a real problem shine beats everybody's ass and whoever don't listen to him shine a little cray Hakeem is bothered by it he goes and tells uh, Lucius about it and Lucius was like are you sleeping with her and he says no he's okay well then that's not, not your problem shit maybe he needed to do that to get the shit done and Hakeem was just like, I don't care what you say. I'm never going to hit no woman. And Lucius was like, well, where that, where's that monster that used to be there? You know, I need that monster back. Just like a monster beats a woman? I mean, I guess they do. But is that what Lucius wants his son to be? I'm telling you, his family is so fucked up. Back at the house, Anika's still going crazy, okay? Crazy Granny is around there, you know, giving her the blues. You know, Anika's like, why aren't you sedated or dead? I was just like, I mean, if that wasn't like a dynasty line, I know some child, but um, Crazy Granny got her good eye on Nika, you know, somebody ring the doorbell and when she answers it, it's the uh, UPS man and when she signs for a package, you know, he's kind of cute, she kind of give him the eye like, hmm. Okay, and Crazy Granny still looking over there like, bitch, you better not. Now, Cookie goes on her little date. Well, it's not really a date. It's like a, um, you know, Councilman Diggs is showing her around the, 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 um, the, the fuck this lady. Councilman Diggs is showing her around, um, you know, where he has his, he, where he takes care of the kids, where they all con congregate and whatnot, so, okay, but he's pissed. What's up with you guys trying to give, uh, you know, this boy a deal, okay, he had a four-year full ride scholarship, 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 scholarship to MIT, and now I hear Lucius is giving him a, and, uh, Cookie was just like, oh, Lucius did that, I didn't know anything about it, okay, he's trying to get back at me, he's mad at me, so that's why he's doing it, and he was just like, you can't have him do that, you know, he needs to know that he can be bigger than a rapper he can't just strive to be a rapper and that's it you know cookie was just like what's wrong with you do you know how many people would die for this contract he's like i don't give a fuck i'm telling you that these are smart kids who have uh, their whole future and they in their in their uh, eyes and you know it's about to get fucked up by lucius once he realizes that maybe he's taking it a little too far and offended her you know he tells her that he's sorry but he just wants to show her what these kids are able to do so he shows her around the premises and you know showing all the kids what they doing good in the community and all that and, and she was you know she looks at him and she's impressed I guess she finally sees why it's so important that this boy don't throw away this four-year scholarship to MIT now Andre gets to court and he finds out that he's being railroaded okay it ain't as simple as he thought it was gonna be okay the judge says that um it was assault to a police and all of this and you know Andre is just like I didn't do that the judge was like well that's what the damn case is for that's what the trial is for I guess Andre didn't even think that they would be going to trial Okay, and his lawyer wants to cut a deal. Andre was like, I'm not cutting no fucking deal. I didn't do anything. Okay, so now all of a sudden, Andre is realizing that uh, this is bigger than he thought it was going to be. He ain't going to just go in there and uh, they was going to throw the case out and that was going to be that. Right when he's outside of the courthouse talking to his lawyer, then who should pull up but uh, Lucius. 
get in. Andre has his brothers, Jamal and Hakeem, with him. They all get into the um, Mercedes um, bus, and uh, Lucius is taking them on a little tour. Where are we going? Oh, we going to the old hood. I got to remind you guys that you black, because you don't know that. Y'all had had shit served to you on a, silver, on a silver platter with a silver spoon in your mouth, and you just don't know what the hell is going on out there. But uh, once you get outside this bus, bitch, you is black. You is a nigga to most of them out there. So, you know, I just got the, you guys are, you know, I, I just thought that your problem was that you was gay, that you was bipolar, and that you was spoiled. But no, y'all don't know you black. So I got, I got to remind you, you know, Andre is pissed. He wants to get off the bus. Lucius is telling them that they soft, kind of telling them the truth. But, you know, this is the time that maybe you don't need to be talking about this. He get to talking about Rhonda and Child. Andre was like, you talk about my wife who just died. Get me off this fucking bus. Open this door before I tear it off. I was just like, y'all know big crazy. You better let him off. Lucius was just like, okay, go on. He goes storming off and Jamal goes running off after him. Hakeem stays on the bus and Lucius is like, you're not going to run after your brothers? And uh, Hakeem was just like, no, nah, I want to go back to the studio. Okay, I guess this is giving them all some inspiration. So they go back to the studio and, you know, Hakeem is killing it and Nessa singing her damn um, hook that she got choked out for and Lucius is happy and Shine is happy. Okay, his monster is back. Right at the end of that, he gets a call and uh, Lucius was just like, God damn it, I got to take it on home. And when he gets there to the house, Anika's now in his office and she's looking at the numbers streaming and they almost at 10 million. That's exactly where Lucius wanted it to be. Right when it gets to 10 million, you know, she's at his desk and she's just like, yes, we thinking that she's happy that it hit 10 million. Then when she backs away from the desk now she got the ups man down there giving her face in the place child i was just like this is real stupid because i don't know no man that's gonna do that when they know somebody another man the man whose house it is is about to come home and kill your motherfucking ass you the ups man you know that she ain't that that ain't her damn house i'm sure you didn't been there that's your regular route lucius pulled his gun out and chased the man out but i was just like crazy anika then came to the realization that she don't need lucius lucius needs her and she tells him just that, listen, I ain't did shit wrong. I'm here to help you out. The FBI is trying to talk to me to get me to come to confess against you. Now, I done did all that I need to do to help you. But if you want to quit, keep on acting a fool and try it, okay? I will get out of here and I will tell. So from now on, you're going to treat me with some respect and uh, listen to what the fuck I say. Or I'm going to talk to Tariq, okay? And we all go down in flames. How's that? Now, Paul Jamal, he in the studio with Kitty. And um, he trying to sing this song that's exclusive that they're going to have. It starts off bad and everybody is looking like he's about to have another one of his meltdowns. You know, Lucius tells Kitty, here we go again. Kitty has faith in him. Okay, let's get the mood right. Turn the lights down, you know. Anyway, him and uh, Mariah, they sing the song, Kitty. Okay, and the song is cool enough. He sounds good. Okay, we ain't got the, you know, we ain't got the Baba Black Sheep or nothing. <laughs> everybody is happy. Okay, right back on it. Lucia was like, I didn't know he had it in him, but he's glad he, is. He, he has it. Okay, so now he's got his exclusive for his streaming service. Again, Mariah Carey has on a fucking leotard. <laughs> I was just like, Mariah Carey doesn't even have like a leotard type body. I mean, she's not big or anything, but you know, it's just, she's not real shapely. She's got big ass titties. She has no hips. She almost has like a Wendy Williams shape. So, child, y'all didn't took these leotards to a whole nother level. I can't. Now, Lucius, he's happy. Jamal and Hakeem look like they done fell back in line. And uh, now he's going to sign this kid, you know, about to sign a contract. The little boy still don't seem like this is the right thing to do. He's kind of uneasy, not sure. Lucius even tried to give him a car. And uh, right when the boy's about to sign, Cookie walks in and tears up the contract for him. She was like, baby, listen, you, you don't need to do this. You go on to MIT with this full scholarship and come back to us in four years, okay? If you still want to do it then, you know, I promise we'll be here. Lucius is looking like, no, we won't. But she was just like, trust me. We will be here. So Lucius is mad about that. Councilman Diggs is happy and Cookie was just like, let me just explain to you that I'm not ashamed about who I am, what I've been through, what has happened to me. Okay, I'm a proud woman and I'm successful in my own right. You know, he apologizes. I'm sorry about that. But he's very thankful that she did, you know, tear up the contract and the boy didn't sign it. Okay, he tries to reach in and give her a kiss and she was just like, ah, ah. I didn't tell you you could do that. When he was walking out, he was like, that's okay, I'll get it next time. I was like, mm -mm, ain't nothing like a confident man. Did I skip that Jamal had went to go see Fantage Loaf in jail and had a panic attack in there? Okay, he really does have PTSD, okay? Every time she was coming forward towards him and she had her hands reached out, you know, he was just like, no, no, no. She was just like, I'm sorry, Jamal, I didn't mean to hurt you. I wasn't trying to hurt you, you know, but he was just like, get back. Well, you did, you shot me. And I, I was just like, Paul Jamal, his family is about to drive his ass crazy. Now, Cookie and Jamal is at him empire with lucius and they're watching the release of the exclusive on the streaming service okay they also see that that lucius has released the black album and he found a loophole in there the black and white album was being produced by him and cookie the black 
part of the album was Lucius' songs, and the white part of the album was Cookie's songs. Well, he just took Cookie's songs off, and he just has his songs that he's producing. And so he released the black album. You know, Jamal is pissed. Cookie tries to tell him, you know what, I own half of this, and that shit wasn't right. He was like, listen, Cookie, I'm taking this shit back, okay? You over here fucking around with Councilman Diggs and whatnot. It's like, I can't even be playing with you no more. She says she got the board on her side, okay? So you don't think that you can take this over, uh, otherwise you won't be there anymore either. They will vote your ass out. But you know what, if that's how you want to play it, then that's how we'll play it. He said, well, let the games begin. And then lastly, we see Andre still walking down the street, okay? <laughs> I was like, is he still walking from when he got off the damn bus? Tariq sees him and pulls him over to the side and tries to get in his head. You know, you're a black sheep just like me. You're not wanted just like me, okay? Maybe you can go against your daddy and, you know, give me the information that I need. Andre is not going to do that. And Tariq realizes that he can't break him down like he thought he would. You prized game. I guess I can't work with you. And Andre is like, nah, nigga, you can't work with me. So we gonna see. That Tariq is trying to find any angle to get in there and he can't up. Somebody give Tariq a hug. All right, you guys, so How to Get Away with Murder opens with Oliver running to, looks like a school lab or something, to clean off the contents of Annalise's um, phone. This is two months into the future, you know, when Annalise gets arrested for burning down her house. We see Annalise being processed, you know, fingerprints, mug shots, all of that. Jumps back to the present six weeks earlier. We see Annalise and real nice Nate <laughs> settling in, I guess, kind of nicely as a couple. At least it looks like Nate is fine. Okay, he's making smoothies and shit for her for breakfast. But Annalise is looking like it's kind of cramping her style. She's not used to having no man in her house. Like, that's a girl. I don't know why not. Real nice Nate looks like he wants more from Annalise than she's willing to give him, okay? He was like, well, what are we doing here? She was just like, I just feel like we should separate our personal from Frank. Maybe this was, we was acted too soon and you know real nice Nate was like well what do you want she was like I don't know let's just play it by ear okay but she give him that hug and grab onto his butt I was just like girl you sure you want him to go when she gets to the school the president finds her and Annalise is pissed off at her for you know blindsiding her at that meeting the president was like if you would just stop fighting me on every turn and Annalise was like my whole life is a fight right now my career is on the line my life is on the line you telling me not to fight I'm sorry somebody did mention that those two have some sexual chemistry and they be so close up and you know Annalise be looking at her and I said oh lord this look like this might be the next bitch on Annalise's chopping block the president tells her just let me help you okay I just need you to keep a low profile Annalise was like I don't know how easy that's gonna be with this new case so the new case for the pro bono clinic or whatever it's called is a guy named Solomon who was caught on video with this girl who he had then gave these drugs to at a party and she overdosed and um she died so he was being charged for her murder he is also known as the call girl creeper after she gives the specifics on the case don't look like nobody wanted Michaela jumps up and says she'll take it. Michaela is the first chair helping Annalise. When they get into court, we find out just how schmarmy of a person that he is. Okay, not only did he drug this girl, but he took a selfie of the girl as she was knocked out and now what we know was being overdosed uh, seven minutes before he actually called the police and said that she was dead. Okay, so the, se the selfie was shown in court and after that, Michaela was just like, yeah, I don't think I want to do this. Annalise was like, too bad. We don't drop our clients. Once we get them, you got them. Okay, so you on the case. Then Wes walks up to Annalise and asks her where Laurel is, and she tells him that uh, she sent her to go see her father. You know, and he was like, why? Well, we see Laurel with her father in Miami, and evidently her father has, like, this company where he's able to, you know, tap into people's phones and you know, find out where they are. He can locate them wherever and all of this. So she's trying to find out where Frank is, okay? But she I, she came there acting like she was just visiting, but the dad already knew. He was just like, so you're trying to find your boyfriend, huh? Let me see if he's worth it. While they're talking about it, you know, the dad has a conflict resolutionist come in there. Is that the name of it? A Con conflict resolution person. Um, and uh, Laurel's just like, why is she here? And he was just like, because I, you know, I need somebody to kind of mediate this meeting here. You know, Laurel's just rolling her eyes. So they arguing, basically, because it just all boils down to the father had a whole bunch of money and looks like he's never really been too concerned about Laurel. Treated her real bad as she was growing up and, you know, never really cared as long as his business came first and his money came first and then his family came maybe somewhere around fifth or sixth. The conflict resolution girl is trying to help out, but she ain't really getting too far nowhere because Laurel and Daddy just can't see eye to eye. Daddy say he want to fix it and move on, but looks like Laurel is holding his grudge, okay? So she gets the hell on up out of there. She's she's done with Daddy for right now. Back at Annalisa's house, you know, she's talking to Bonnie. She going crazy because um, <laughs> real nice Nate is there and he 
fucking giving her smoothies to death and she was just like i just want a fucking steak bonnie was like oh he's staying here and she was just like don't seem so happy and bonnie was like no i think it's fine that he's there i don't have a problem with real nice nate okay i really am just having a problem with this case the case hits too close to home with bonnie's rape case with her father and the fact that this girl was raped by this man and overdosed and all of that and you know died so bonnie wants annalise to cut a deal and annalise was just like yeah i, I don't really want to do that and she was just like i mean you know this is just not right jump over to asher and connor okay they giving michaela the blues teasing her kinda because her ex has gotten re-engaged to some cute black chick and you know she looks like she has a lot of money and they look real happy and it's all on the internet their engagement pictures and all that so she's upset solomon the call girl creeper is listening in you know he kind of looking like he want to hit on michaela and um you know asher jumps in front of him like no 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 this is my boo okay we together now you can't have you know no parts of her while he's going on and on about her being his boo or her being his boo or whatever in walks bonnie she overhears the conversation you know and uh, she just listens and asher was just like you know bonnie i'm sorry okay she was just like don't you don't need to apologize to me you know so he's just thinking to himself like shit we still know that Asher really wants to be with Bonnie. And Elise is taking some thought of what Bonnie said. And she goes down there to meet with the prosecutor. Real cute little black girl. Looked like she's real spiffy and smart and all of that. While they're talking, you know, the prosecutor is like, we're not cutting no deals. I don't know why you're here. And Elise was like, damn, I ain't even been able to say that. She was like, no, you don't understand. We're not never doing nothing with you. We ain't working with you no more, okay? It's all because of bad behavior. This payback, biatch, you've been acting up for years. And Annalise was like, well, damn, is that how y'all roll now? She was just like, that's how we roll now. Oh, okay, such confidence that you have. And she was just like, yeah, that's a trait that I got from you as well. When Annalise was walking out, she was like, I see. She said, except I don't have to fake it. That bitch walked out. I said, you better say that, Annalise, shit. Now, Wes. He in the bed with his girlfriend, you guys. He about to fuck it up. He's all just, I just was like, he's too concerned about Laurel. And, um, you know, the girlfriend seems to be all into him. And she wants to do something for his birthday. And he seems to just be, you know, always thinking about Laurel. Laurel calls in the middle of them in the bed, you know. And the, and the girlfriend gets up and goes to the bathroom. But, you know, he, he's on the phone with Laurel. I said, oh, yeah, you about to fuck it up. And Laurel's telling them how, you know, she did go see the dad. And while she's on the phone with Wes, her dad comes to the hotel room. He brings a pot so I guess it's a peace offering and it looks like they done made up the dad is asking her you know why is it that you want to even find Frank is it because you got daddy issues because I left you and all that you know she was just like you are narcissistic narcissistic as hell where is Frank are you gonna tell me you're not okay he hands her this paperwork we think that's you know him telling her where Frank is but it turns out that it's an investment deal that he wants to put in her name so she needs to sign the paperwork she's pissed off she throws the paperwork in the trash can and tells him that he need to leave Annalise calls and uh, when she sees her name flash across her cell phone you know she pushes the climb because she don't have no information for him. She still don't know where Frank is. While Annalise was trying to call um, Laurel, that real nice Nate come in the room. Charlie got this 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 vest on and he just a glistening and sweating. I said, Nate, why is you shining? <laughs> Oh my god, I was just like, they already know that everybody be lusting after that real nice Nate. Okay, so they just playing on it now. While Annalise and real nice Nate is talking, then in walks Bonnie and Michaela and Oliver. And when Oliver looks at real nice Nate, Oliver can't get his shit together. He was just like, oh my god. Real nice Nate looks at Oliver, then he looks at Annalise, and he was just like, okay, I'm gonna leave. Now Oliver turned all the way around and watched his ass walk out, and then he was just standing there like, oh, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought i said i know how you feel oliver so when nate leaves out you know they tell annalise that solomon then went to the bank and got some money out okay remember he's supposed to be broke oh i might not um might not have uh, told you guys that but he's supposedly not had don't have no money um that's why they're doing this whole pro bono case so annalise and bonnie go they see him running down the stairs and you know annalise was like oh i thought you didn't have any money solomon was just like yeah i'm getting this money because my old lawyer is blackmailing me annalise was like he's blackmailing you why and he was just like how do i know that you won't blackmail me either and she was just like okay nigga if this is how you want to play it and he was just like because because okay okay because i killed somebody this girl named Janie. annalise is looking like here we go so they take solomon back to annalise's house and she didn't kick michaela and them off the case okay you off the case go do whatever you do and when they go in her office you know solomon tells her what happened so evidently he met this girl named Janie. she was a runaway you know he had all these drugs so they got high in this hotel room and i guess he thought he was about to get busy in it and Janie was just like uh I am only here for the drugs like you thought that I was gonna let your fat hairy ass get on top of me and fuck me I really don't think so Ugh. I would rather have my fucking fingernails pulled off before I fucked you you know she 
going on and on and saying all these insulting things to um solomon and he can't take it and right when she turned around put her shoes on like she about to walk out there he was like i don't think you are he swing a damn bat and bust her head open the blood splatters all on him and everything okay so janie did annalise is just shaking her head well where is she now well he didn't left her body in some freezer in some abandoned warehouse this didn't stress annalise and bonnie all the fuck the way out okay they sitting there getting drunk trying to figure out you know how they gonna get this taken care of you know bonnie wants to turn him in okay she was like i can call i can make an anonymous call and annalise was like we can't do that he'll know that you told was, you know so no we can't do that bonnie is crying because she wants to you know this is not fair this girl is dead in a warehouse somewhere in 18 19 years old okay the mom is still updating the, the website trying to find her daughter okay this has been years that this lady don't know where her daughter is bonnie knows where it is and they can't do nothing about it so bonnie is upset even when annalise was talking to her she had got kind of close and you know when when bonnie was saying she was leaving and annalise was like you ain't gotta leave stay here <laughs> i was just like annalise i think you ain't pushing up on bonnie but bonnie was just like i'm not gonna call the police annalise was like i didn't say that i want to put my face in the place <laughs> Now skip back over to Michaela. She's so pissed off she didn't took this money and took it down to the casinos um, with Asher and Connor and Oliver. Okay, again, here we go with Oliver and Connor. They get on my fucking nerves. Okay, you know, Oliver, I'm so glad that we're able to do this and be friends. Connor's like, we're not friends. I'm just here for the good time. So, you know, they at the casino and they on the on the tables, or at least Michaela and Asher are on the tables, and she's betting all this money crazy and she's winning. Okay. Then we see Oliver over there, he looked like he flirting with some guy. Connor is over on the slot machine, so Asher sees Oliver over there, so he goes and tells Connor, like, you better go over there and get your man. And this shit ain't right. He can't be up here just flirting with somebody. You know, Connor's like, that ain't my man. I don't care what he do. Anyway, the guy who was talking to Oliver, all of a sudden, out of all of the people in the room, now he want to talk to Connor. He comes up to Connor, and he was just like, yeah, you know, I've been seeing you across the room. You was looking good and everything. Yeah, I was talking to the Asian over there, but, you know, Asians ain't really my thing. Connor was just like oh you got a problem with asians he was just like yeah i mean like why are you arguing with me i'll fuck you up that's why and <laughs> you know connor just mad when oliver sees that connor is fussing at the guy well oliver thinks that connor is jealous which i guess he is but he also says some kind of foul shit about asians right see this is what's getting on my nerves these two are too close for comfort like if you broke up then quit fucking hanging out together we see that michaela then lost all the money so all the good time high then came all the way down they go get in the car connor and oliver you know and and, and connor apologizes apologizes to Oliver okay said that he was a little jealous you know Oliver's just like I don't need you to say sorry I need you to act like an adult I need you to quit fucking being around me nigga fuck you we ain't gonna be friends we ain't gonna be nothing <laughs> shit I'm not trying to be friends with my ex especially if I still have feelings for him look they about to get my pressure up them too let's get back to Bonnie you know she's still obsessed about this case you know she's on the website she sees the mommy you know trying to talk to her daughter Janie wherever she may be out there and it's just giving her the blues we see Annalise in bed with real nice Nate and he was just like you know why don't you just tell me what your problem is like just tell you tell me our, tell me your secrets okay so she tells him I got a dead girl in a freezer in an abandoned warehouse and I can't do nothing about it skip over to Laurel and her phone rings and we see that it is fine ass Frank okay and when she answers it fine ass Frank is pissed okay you tell Annalise don't send any more hitmen my way did you think I was gonna fall for that I love you and I want you to come back shit Annalise got to get up way early in the morning to pull one over on me. Okay, Laurel's trying to talk to him, but fine ass Frank hangs up the phone. Now, Michaela, this money that she didn't stole, she got to replace it. She got her engagement ring still from the guy. So, you know, she goes to the pawn shop and she pawns the ring, and has the money to replace. And then whatever she had left over, she gives to the homeless people out in front of the pawn shop. Okay, $1,000. You know, Ashley was just like, are you crazy? You know what we can do with that 1000 <laughs> Now, the next day, we in court for Solomon. Okay, he's up on the stand. And he's telling Annalise how he got arrested um, the night that Virginia died. That was the girl that was overdosed. Supposedly, while Solomon was in jail, the person that was in the jail cell with him told him about Janie. And this guy told Solomon that he killed Janie and put her in the free. And the prosecution went crazy. The black girl jumps up and was just like, I object. You know, we didn't know anything about this. They didn't ever say anything. And Annalise was like, well, I tried to tell you the other day when we met, but you didn't, didn't give me the chance. Did we not meet yesterday? And the prosecutor said yes. And she said, and did you not tell me that, you know, the prosecution wouldn't work with me anymore because I had bad behavior in the past and you guys didn't never want to work with me at all? Your Honor, I think that proves prosecutorial bias. Okay, it's not fair for 
me or any of my clients. The prosecutor was like, Your Honor, I can explain. And Elise was all indignant. You know, I can handle being made look bad, but I will not let my clients be subjected to this kind of treatment. So it looks like Annalise has gotten Solomon a deal, okay? Three years. So they get a break. And she's telling Solomon this, her and Bonnie in the room with Solomon. And Solomon was like, what, three years? I hired you because you said that you would get me off. And Annalisa was like, you killed two innocent women. Motherfucker, your ass should be going to jail for way longer than this. Three years is nothing compared to what you have done, okay? He get to trying to complain and Annalise can't take that shit up. Well, that bitch reared back like this and she said, pow! Bonnie was like, oh shit. She was like, motherfucker, you don't get to complain. You gonna take these three years. Say you gonna take it. Say it. He was just like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it. She said, I know the fuck you are. Shit. Now we skip over to West in the bed. You know, he thinking about Laurel again. Again, he gonna fuck this up, okay? He text her. Trying to find out, you know, did she find out where fine-ass Frank was? And she just ignores it. But the next day when it's time for her to leave, she goes back to see her dad. Okay, she gives him the paperwork. She signed it. The dad is happy that she did that. Okay, he tells her that, you know, fine-ass Frank is in Pittsburgh. They don't know why, but that's where he is. Like, I'm sorry, though. You know, I really want to work on our relationship. I want everything to get back right. I know I was wrong in the past, but I'm ready to get right now. Please don't disappear out of my life no more. So they, they hug and make up. So it looks like maybe her and her... Her dad's um, relationship is on the men's. Michaela takes it on back to Annalise's office. She's trying to replace the money. And then she sees Bonnie and she tries to apologize to Bonnie um, for sleeping with Asher. And Bonnie was like, you can bone whoever the fuck you want. Don't. You ain't got to apologize to me. I love Bonnie. She's just so frank and just like just so deadpan all the time. But Annalise has finally got a genuine reason to smile. She's looking on the internet at the case that her and Michaela has cracked. Okay, they found a dead body. Okay, Janie, the mama knows where her daughter is now. So that can be closed and you know they looking like the heroes that they are i ain't seen annalise smile in so long it was weird to see her do it we also see the president reading um the um the um article on the internet and then she gets a call and she says yes daddy i'm reading it right now i was just like hmm, that's interesting now why the dad call her who the daddy again wes about to fuck it up he calls laurel okay and he leaves a message for her to call him back and then um you know, the, 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 the girlfriend was just like, you just going to keep on with this, huh? You know, I, I understand, you know, you got this special bond with Laurel and you deserve to be happy and all. But I'm sitting right here in your face and you so busy worrying about Laurel. I want you to be happy. And whatever that means for you and I, I guess I just need you to let me know, you know. But uh, Wes tells her, you know, that he trying to be with her. I was just like, girl, don't believe it. When Laurel gets back, she tells Annalise that she don't know where fine ass Frank is, even though the father told her that he was in Pittsburgh. So I was just like, mm, okay she's still protecting old fine ass Frank I guess I would too then it jumps back to six weeks later okay when Annalise is in jail we see Bonnie talking to Oliver he has indeed scraped the the phone clean they need to get over back by the ambulance so Bonnie says that she is Annalise's lawyer so they're able to get past the police lines he goes over by the ambulance and he drops the phone under there and right when he does it you know they're like wait a minute wait a minute and Oliver jumps out of his skin one of the firemen is, gets a call that there's another body in the house and uh, that person has a pulse so we don't know who that is but we do know now the second person that is not under that sheet is Bonnie. So who do you guys think is under the sheet? Who's dead? All right, you guys, let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.